the year some point in the 2070s. The place? Earth. The situation? An absolute bloody flip show, mate. Originally released in 2016, Overwatch takes place in a future version of Earth following a number of notable events. Humans have created robots with artificial intelligence known as Omnix. Some of the facilities producing said Omnix created a series of hostile machines resulting in the Omnic Crisis, hell no, and the International Task Force Overwatch was formed to combat the lethal automatons. As is often the case when you bring together a bunch of folks with big powers and even bigger egos, however, cough Avengers, cough cough, things soon went wrong for Overwatch. Head honchos Gabriel Reyes and Jack Morrison began fighting with one another, with Reyes being transferred to Blackwatch to lead the organization's covert ops arm. Things really went to hell, however, when Reyes killed a mobster rather than taking him into custody. Things snowballed for Overwatch, and eventually the UN stepped in, disbanding the group and banning Overwatch-like activity in a move known as the Petrus Act. Six years later, things were about as bad for Earth as they had been around the first Omnic Crisis, and smart monkey, sorry, ape, Winston decided to heck with the UN and reformed Overwatch in order to protect the peace. Overwatch was Blizzard's flagship multiplayer first-person shooter, which tasked players with picking a hero from a roster of 21 different offense, defense, support, and tank characters, and then engaging in a bit of team-based shooty-shooty fun. Over the years, multiple changes were made to the title. The class options became just support, tank, and DPS, a number of different gameplay modes were launched, and perhaps most importantly, certainly for the purposes of this list at least, several new characters were added to the already expansive roster. In 2022, Overwatch watched its last over as its servers were shut down to make way for Overwatch 2, a game which is very similar to its predecessor but with more bells, whistles, microtransactions and, of course, heroes to get to grips with. At the time of writing, there are now 39 different heroes for players to choose from, and with so many options, it can be difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff. I think then, a nice old ranked list will sort this situation right out. Before we get to it though, we'd better go through the rules, hadn't we? Today we're ranking every Overwatch and Overwatch 2 hero from worst to best based on a number of factors, including how easy they are for players to initially get to grips with, how iconic they are, and just how well they actually do their dang jobs. To be clear, all of these heroes can be great with the right player behind them, but some are definitely better than others when just in the hands of Joe Public. We appreciate that our methods here may be less than scientific, so we must ask that, even if you disagree with our rankings, please be nice to us and other people in the comments. We don't want to have to meteor strike your ass. All of that nice and clear, then sit back and relax, because the cavalry's here! <coughs> Excuse me. Let's rank them. I'm a big guy with an even bigger hammer, Ben. And I'm a tiny hamster operating a spherical mech, Peter from Triple Jump. And here is every Overwatch hero, ranked from worst to best. Number 39. Genji. I know, I know, there will be several Genji mains out there who are incredibly disappointed by the ninja's placement on this list, but hear me out, because there's a good reason that the shuriken-tossing hero has been relegated to the bottom of the heap. He sucks. Don't get us wrong, Genji is a nicely designed character who wields a sick, glowing katana and has the most tragic of backstories killed by his own brother for the crime of being a bit selfish. Ouch. But he has a variety of flaws. Firstly, he's really rather tricky for players to get to grips with, and having anything less than the very best of Genji players on your team is a recipe for disaster. His shuriken primary weapon requires players to have pinpoint accuracy, deflex needs precision timing and positioning in order to be fully effective, and both Swift Strike and Dragon Blade rely on the player being able to get safely in and out of trouble quick fast. Genji's biggest crime, however, is so big that it's become something of a meme. He constantly needs healing. Worse, though, because he's always hopping about like a fidgety rabbit on speed, he's a pain in the ass for precision-based support characters like Anna and Zenyatta to heal. For all of these reasons, plus the fact that he was only created as an afterthought because Hanzo had too varied of a skill set, Genji must settle for last place. Not sure how he's going to heal from that massive blow. Number 38. Winston. He may be the whole reason that the band got back together, and for that we do salute him, but let's face it, Winston isn't all that fun to play. 
Yes, he's big and brutish when he wants to be, but as Overwatch tanks go, he's not a particularly good choice, especially since the launch of the sequel. This big old ape comes equipped with a Tesla cannon, which is sort of like a large gun that fires lightning, and whilst it's fine for those who aren't all that good at aiming, it never feels particularly powerful. Winston also has a jump pack, which allows him to launch himself into the fray, as well as a barrier projector to shield himself and his allies from harm. Sadly though, this shield is static, and in the fast-paced world of Overwatch, it's likely that your team will have moved on to another fight before you've even had a chance to deploy the thing. Primal Rage is also a fairly disappointing ultimate, giving Winston a massive health boost, but then limiting him to only be able to jump and thwack things. We'd like to give the banana-loving tank extra points for being cute and cuddly, but alas, he's not even the most adorable character on the Overwatch roster. Yes, he's smart, and admittedly he's a hefty lad, but unfortunately those things alone do not a good tank make. Perhaps he'd be better hanging out at Overwatch HQ designing some sort of peanut butter-powered Omnic stopping machine. It'd clog up their joints and everything. Number 37. Roadhog. It's one thing to get hooked on a video game, but honestly, this is just ridiculous. The second tank to grace today's list is Roadhog, a chonky lad with an improvised shotgun and a big old fish hook that he just loves to throw in enemies' faces. Once just a regular human named Maker Rutledge, the large lad started on the road to becoming Roadhog when he joined the Australian Liberation Front in a bid to strike back against the Omnics that had forced him out of his home. Roadhog can generally be found hanging out where battle is thickest, dragging enemies towards him with his chain hook and then blasting them in the face with his scrap gun, usually with fatal results. The Take a Breather ability allows Mr. Hog to restore a decent amount of health points. Pigpen launches a trap that damages and slows adversaries, and his Whole Hog ultimate, which sees his primary weapon transformed into a sort of chain gun, is relatively effective when it comes to crowd control. What lets Roadhog down is the fact that he's not all that easy to play well, and if you miss your chain hook shot, he's effectively useless for several seconds as the scrap gun only does decent amount of damage at very close range. A good Roadhog is a nightmare for the enemy, but a bad one is a massive hindrance to his teammates, and with Overwatch 2 reducing tanks per team from 2 to 1, it's no good having useless bacon on your side. Number 36. May. A good enemy Roadhog may well be irritating, but it's nowhere near as annoying as loading up a game and finding that you've been lumbered with a May. It doesn't matter whether she's on the enemy's side or your own, she's frustrating as all hell, especially with a less than experienced player at the helm. May's whole shtick revolves around ice and snow, and she's able to utilize the elements to both damage and disrupt opponents. Her primary weapon, the Endothermic Blaster, has two functions. It can fire shards of ice to deal damage, or it can discharge cold air to freeze enemies in place. That in and of itself is a pain, but it's her other two non-ultimate abilities that are the most irksome. First is Cryo Freeze, which encases May in ice, healing her and making her invulnerable for a few seconds, which is really vexatious when you're just a hit from killing her. Her absolute worst ability, however, is Ice Wall. A good May player will use it to thoroughly tick off the opposition by blocking their path, whereas a bad May player will use it without thought and end up ruining their team's best laid plans. If you're a May player and you've ever, even just once, used Ice Wall to block off the exit to your team's spawn point, then you should just move to the Antarctic and live alone in a tent, because honestly, you don't deserve to be part of civilized society. Number 35. Wrecking Ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. That's enough of that. We come now to the first Overwatch hero on today's list that wasn't one of the initial 21. Wrecking Ball was first introduced to the original Overwatch in July 2018, and whilst he may not be the most effective tank on the roster, he's the gosh darned cutest by a country mile. Look at those little hamster cheeks. Oh, so foofy. Wrecking Ball, also known as Hammond, is a hyper-intelligent hamster who makes up for his lack of size by piloting a spherical mech suit. He's able to get around quickly by rolling, hamster ball style, and engaging combat by converting the mech into its attack mode, which has four legs and quad cannons. He also has the Pile Driver ability, which allows him to curl up and smash down on his opponent, inflicting damage, a grappling claw, which can turn him into a literal wrecking ball, adaptive shield, which offers temporary HP, and his ultimate minefield, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Like Roadhog, Wrecking Ball was a fine tank in Overwatch because he could be paired with others. However, as a lone tank, he's a bit of a damp squib. A very good Wrecking Ball player might be able to successfully utilize his hit-and-run style of gameplay, but in the hands of most players, he's sadly a waste of time. In fact, pretty much the only reason we put him ahead of Roadhog is that he's just so flippin' adorable. Look at him, floofy. Number 34. Zenyatta. 
According to our research, the least good support hero in Overwatch's ranks is Zenyatta, an omnic healer so chilled that he literally has the word Zen in his name. Zenyatta once belonged to an order of omnic monks called the Shambhali, who dwelled in a monastery deep in the Himalayas and believed that, like humans, omnics also have a soul. These days, however, he can be found trying his best to aid his Overwatch comrades by dishing out healing to his friends and debuffs to his foes. Zenyatta does have an offensive weapon, the Orbs of Destruction, but it's his Orbs of Discord and Harmony that make him useful on the battlefield, along with his Transcendence Ultimate ability that makes him invulnerable and heals nearby allies. Sadly, playing as Zenyatta requires more forward thinking than just flinging orbs about the place, as the orbs of discord and harmony can only be on one foe and one friend at a time. Basically, if your entire team is on its last legs and Zenyatta's ultimate ability isn't ready, then it's probably best to just start thinking about everyone's funeral arrangements. Furthermore, his orbs of destruction require reasonable accuracy, meaning that Zenyatta is really only a good pick for those with decent aim and a strategic mind. Still, he's a healer, and any healer's better than none at all. Plus, his silky smooth voice is enough to de-stress even the most anxious of players. Experience tranquility. Experience tranquility, you say, Zenyatta? Maybe I'll go for a nice hot bubble bath and do just that. Ah, oh, lovely. That's the sound of me in a bubble bath. Number 33. Mercy. If you're hard up for healers on your team, then Mercy is a slightly better pick for most players than Zenyatta, though admittedly, not by much. This winged Swiss field medic was first noticed by Overwatch after she was responsible for a breakthrough in the field of nanobiology, a science concerned with combining biology and nanotechnology. Don't worry, I'm not really sure what any of that means either, but it sounds mightily impressive. She may be quite the smart cookie, but Mercy suffers from many of the same problems that Zenyatta does. Her healing and buffs can only target one ally at a time, and her offensive weapon needs a decent level of accuracy. The reason she stands in slightly higher regard than Zenyatta, with us at least, is the fact that she's able to raise the dead. Yes, she can only do it infrequently, but this skill alone can come in clutch when it comes to turning the tide of battle. Arguably, though, her ultimate ability, Valkyrie, is a bit of a letdown, as it just allows Mercy to fly around and do her healing and buffing rather than walking. If you're the sort of player that's happy to be almost purely support and are able to manage your own health whilst hanging out where the battle is thickest, then you might just make a good Mercy. Generally speaking, though, she's a bit of a tough nut to crack, so your team would probably be better off remaining merciless. Number 32. Reinhardt Back in the day, if you loaded up a game of Overwatch and saw that the enemy team had a Reinhardt, you might as well have quit out there and then. The massive armoured tank hero who wields both a hefty hammer and a huge shield could easily protect his entire team from damage whilst also dishing out plenty of hurt himself. These days, however, Reinhardt is less of a force to be reckoned with, owing to the fact that he no longer has another tank to be causing chaos whilst he's busy trying to shield everyone. The ginormous German isn't without his advantages, of course. His rocket hammer can do devastating amounts of damage at melee range, charge can crush opponents if you aim it just right, fire strike is a great little ranged attack, and Reinhardt's ultimate, Earth Shatter, is handy for breaking up a crowd. Still, the shift to a one-tank meta in Overwatch 2 means that the lumbering Reinhardt can be something of a liability, especially if players are trying to use him how they did back when Overwatch was released in 2016. With that said, he's not completely without value, it's just that veteran players will certainly need to alter their Reinhardt playstyle to a more aggressive approach if they want to stick with the burly Bavarian at all, that is. Less shield, more hammer down, I say. Number 31. Symmetra. If, back when Overwatch was Overwatch and not Overwatch 2, you were in the market for a DPS character that was reasonably easy to get to grips with, then you could have done worse than to choose Symmetra, and even in the sequel, she's not without merit. Her photon projector doesn't require too much accuracy, so is great for slightly ham-handed players, plus its dual functionality means it's useful at both close and long range. The teleporter is incredibly valuable for allies, especially if placed near the spawn as it helps them to get back into the fight quickly, and her photon barrier ultimate can really ruin a opponent's plans by shielding the whole team. Sadly, her sentry turrets, which are, let's face it, the main draw of playing as Symmetra, aren't as useful as they once were. On Overwatch's assault maps such as Hanamura, Temple of Anubis, and Volskaya Industries, Symmetra's turrets could cause enemies some real problems. 
Alas, Overwatch 2 scrapped this mode in favor of more dynamic ones, and as such, there are far fewer opportunities for Symmetra to utilize her USP. More strategically minded players might still be able to make good use of Symmetra, but they'll need to put careful thought into where they're placing those turrets and keep them on the move. Still, with mobility seemingly being the order of the day in Overwatch 2, we can't help but feel like Symmetra's 15 minutes of fame are long over. If you want her, she can be found in an off, off, off Broadway production of Cats. She makes a great Grizabella. Number 30. Farah. Hate being on the ground? Think walkings for chumps? Then you need to get a little Farah in your life. Indeed, the next hero to grace today's list is Overwatch's resident bird lady, Farah. Hailing from sunny Egypt, Farah is equipped with a number of weapons that make her the deadliest woman in the sky, including a rocket launcher, hover jets, the jump jet skill, which launches her rapidly skywards, and concussive blast, which sends enemies flying. If you ever hear the words, justice reigns from above, then it's time to find cover, because that means that Farah's unleashing her ultimate, a barrage of deadly mini rockets that are excellent for mowing down a cluster of enemies. So, if Farah's so great, why is she so far down on our list? Well, it simply comes down to the fact that she's not useful on every map. If you're lucky enough to drop into a game on one of Overwatch 2's more open arenas, then Farah is a great addition to the team, as she can blast off and take out whole squads with her rocket launcher and separate groups with the concussive blast, making them easy pickings for other players, but try to confine her to the inside of a building and she's about as much use as a chocolate teapot. On outdoor maps, a good Farah can cause serious issues for the enemies, but even the best Farah is limited once there's a roof in the way. And we can't say farer than that. Sorry. Number 29. Junkrat. What do you get when you take a wild looking Aussie fella and give him a load of explosives? Apparently, you get Junkrat, the bloke from the bush who just loves to make things go boom. Jameson Fawkes, known to most as Junkrat, relies on traps and bombs to get the job done. His primary weapon, the Frag Launcher, fires small but powerful bouncing explosives that are as chaotic as they are deadly, and watch out if you do manage to off this lad from the land down under because he'll drop all of his bombs and take anyone in the vicinity with him. He's also equipped with a Steel Trap, which is, for all intents and purposes, a bear trap, and concussion mines that he can set off at will. His ultimate, the Rip Tire, is a player-guided wheel that can be driven at enemies before exploding and is great for breaking up a crowd. The main issue with Junkrat is how inconsistent he is. If enemies are clustered together at a choke point in a map, then he can do a lot of harm, but the unpredictability of his main weapon makes him far less useful in more open situations. On the plus side, though, he is easy enough for new players to get to grips with, and his immunity to his own explosives means that he can use the concussion mine to get out of trouble in a pinch. We don't recommend using this method to get out of a tiresome work meeting, though. It won't end well. Number 28. Anna. We're checking in with Anna now, the support heroine mother of winged DPS Farah. Despite carrying a sniper rifle, which are notorious for generally causing more problems to people's health than they solve, Anna's primary function on the battlefield is as a medic and all-round helping hand. The biotic rifle does indeed have the ability to take down enemies, but if fired at an ally, it will actually make them feel better. If you're still feeling a bit peaky, Anna's Biotic Grenade is the perfect pick-me-up that you need, though enemies better beware because it also has the power to harm. In fact, probably best to avoid the opposing Anna altogether if you don't want to end up on the end of her sleep dart before taking a mid-battle snooze. Anna's final and ultimate ability is the Nano Boost, which she can deploy on an ally, giving them a serious boost and reducing their damage taken. Rather handy. Anna is great for the same reason that she's not, and that's the fact that she's a sniper, which is wonderful if you want to do devastating damage to the enemy, but not so good if you're like our writer and couldn't hit a roadhog at 10 paces. She does deliver both hurts and heals, and if you get a good Anna on your team, you'll all be better for it, but accuracy is key to mastering her, and if you've not got the perfect aim, then there are better support options than Anna available to you. Luckily, however, we don't have to deal with any more snipers. Number 27. Widowmaker. Ah, oh, damn it, spoke too soon. There is perhaps no other Overwatch hero that lives up to their moniker quite like Widowmaker, because if she gets you in her sights, it's lights out. She also has probably the most tragic backstory of all of the heroes, having been kidnapped by terrorist group Talon, brainwashed and transformed into a sleeper agent, and forced to murder her own husband. I mean, there's brutal and then there's that. Widowmaker is a sniper, and when she's not in sniping range, really the only thing she's good at is getting out of dodge to get back into sniping range. Her primary weapon, the Widow's Kiss, does function as both a long-range sniper weapon and an automatic assault rifle, however the latter isn't all that useful because that's not what Widowmaker is meant for. 
This killer queen, as her name would suggest, also comes equipped with a poison weapon, the Venom Mine, and additionally she's got a grappling hook to get her out of any close quarters encounters quick sharp. Charge her ultimate ability and you'll get to use Infrasight, which reveals the location of all enemies, not just to Widowmaker, but to her entire team. In the hands of a decent sniper, Widowmaker is lethal, being able to down some enemies with just a single headshot and causing serious issues for the opposing team if she's positioned just right. Sadly though, her high skill ceiling makes her a poor pick for most players. Number 26. Moira Need a bit of the luck of the Irish on your side? Then you could do far worse than Moira, the Emerald Isle's finest genetic engineer. The personal favourite hero of our writer, Moira can dish out the heels and the hurts in equal measure, utilising her knowledge of biotic energy to drain the life force from foes and revitalise her teammates. Her biotic grasp can either deal damage or heal allies at close range, and her biotic orbs are handy for bringing the pain and taking away the ouchies at mid-range. Get overwhelmed and Moira can use her fade ability to zip out of danger in a split second. Perhaps the most underwhelming thing about Moira is her ultimate, because it's just kind of… meh. It deals damage, but often not enough, unless you can get someone backed into a corner, and the healing it deals is no more impressive, really, than that offered by her biotic grasp. Still, it's never disappointing to see a Moira on your team, and although her ult might be roughly as useful as mittens for snakes, you can be certain that you're never going to be short of pick-me-ups. Plus, she's easy for newcomers to get to grips with since you basically just have to point her in the vague direction of an ally or enemy and she does her job. I'm starting to see why our writer likes her so much now. Cat, you suck! Number 25. Reaper the scariest member of Team Overwatch is undoubtedly its ex-leader, Gabriel Reyes, better known as the terrifying mononym Reaper. Once loyal to Overwatch, heading up its covert ops arm, Blackwatch, Reyes defected to Talon following an explosion in Switzerland. Though believed dead, Reyes survived, and a brush with morally bankrupt geneticist Moira left him in something of a purgatory between life and death his cells constantly decaying and regenerating. Armed with his Hellfire shotguns, which he reloads by hurling them to the ground and then creating two more from his own genetic matter, Reaper heals with every landed blow. He can quickly get into and out of danger using his Wraith form and Shadow Step abilities, and there's nothing that can clear a room like his Death Blossom ultimate. In tight spots, Reaper is a force to be reckoned with, but in Overwatch 2, these seem few and far between, meaning there are plenty of ways to escape the Reaper. Still, if the enemy team does insist on clustering themselves on the point, then who are you to deny them a swift death blossoming? It was Blue Oyster Cult that advised us not to fear the Reaper, and whilst we wouldn't go as far as to say he isn't worthy of trepidation, he's certainly not as scary now as he once was. No, oh, you feel like you're in a state of constant living death, do you, Reaper? Pfft, don't we all, pal? You're nothing special. Number 24. Ash. Without spoiling the next entry too much, it was a bit of a toss-up which of Overwatch's cow people to put ahead of the other, as it was a rather close-run race, but in the end, we had to give it to the OG, leaving Ash in second place. I assume cow people is the gender-neutral version of cowboys, by the way, and I'll be damned if I'm looking it up. Voiced by the incomparable Jennifer Hale, Ash is the founder of the Deadlock Gang a group of notorious criminals dead set on bringing back the glory days of the Wild West. This gun-toting cowgirl has more than a few tricks up her sleeve, including the Viper, a semi-automatic rifle that admittedly wouldn't fit up anyone's sleeve, a coach gun capable of blasting her and her enemies back several yards, and every prospector's greatest weapon, dynamite, which is well, it, it's, it's dynamite. The coolest thing about Ash, though, is undoubtedly her robot, Bob, who she can unleash as her ultimate ability. For a few seconds, Ash players get to enjoy the perks of having their own personal tank, who will launch himself into the fray and mow down enemies with reckless abandon. As awesome as Ash is, though, she relies heavily on accuracy, so unless you're an incredible marksman, better to steer clear of this southern belle at all costs. If you are an incredible marksman, though, hey, have at it. Number 23. Cassidy 
After crunching the numbers, we found that there really wasn't all that much in it when it comes to which Overwatch cow person is the better pick, and ultimately, it came down to our own personal preference. As Cassidy was here first, and is arguably the more iconic of the two, however, he gets the higher position on this list. Once a member of the Deadlock gang, the Matt Mercer-voiced Cassidy was eventually coerced into joining Blackwatch, but when all that went to plops, he disappeared underground, resurfacing later as a gun for hire. And if you're gonna hire a gun, there are worse choices than Cassidy. Armed with his trusty Peacekeeper revolver, Cassidy is the deadliest man in the Wild West, able to combat roll in and out of danger and slow enemies with his magnetic grenade. Wondering what the time is? It's high noon, baby, and if you ever hear those immortal words, it's best to run for cover, as Cassidy is about to unleash Deadeye, which allows him to take out an entire team with his peacekeeper if he catches them all in his line of sight. Alas, Cassidy is also an accuracy-based hero, and as such, he suffers from many of the same problems as Ash, and whilst he can do a great deal of damage and cause plenty of trouble, he needs a player with sniper-like ability at the helm to truly get the best out of him. Before we finish this entry though, a quick PSA for you. If you ever see Matt Mercer in the street, don't ask him what time it is. We gather he doesn't much care for it. Number 22. Sombra. Ever wondered what it would be like to be invisible? Well, I think if I suddenly had the power to disappear, I'd use it to nick hobnobs from the office biscuit tin and move stuff around on Ashton's desk just to freak her out. Perhaps I could dream a little bigger, though. Debuting in November 2016, Sombra was the second additional hero to be added to Overwatch's roster after Anna in July of that year. Hailing from Mexico, this machine pistol toting lady is all about creeping up behind her foes and using her hacking skills to disrupt their abilities. Additionally, stealth allows her to turn completely invisible, which means she can sneak up and hack them before they've even realized what's happened and then pump them full of lead for good measure. Not only can she stay out of sight if she chooses, but her keen senses also allow her to detect critically injured adversaries, even if they're behind walls. There really is nowhere to hide whilst Sombra's in town. Her ultimate isn't to be sniffed at either. EMP deals damage to all nearby enemies, hacks them, and destroys barriers like Reinhardt's shield. Unfortunately, Sombra's reworking for Overwatch 2 placed less emphasis on disruption and more on damage, so she's not the pain in the ass that she once was. Still, she can take down foes with the best of them, and in a one-on-one -on -one fight, a good Sombra is hard to beat. I'm glad we've had plenty of positives to say here, because uh, I wouldn't want this entry to end on a Sombra tone. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Number 21. Brigitte. The youngest daughter of Torbjorn, Brigitte Lindholm is something of a jack of all trades. A little bit of damage, a dash of tankiness, and a heaping spoonful of support all come together into one heavily armored package, and the result is a hero that's… well, she's not bad. Brigitte comes equipped with a vast array of skills. If you're looking to do some harm to the enemy team, her rocket flail can slap them about to within an inch of their lives, as long as she's in melee range, of course, and whip shot will propel an adversary away, making it perfect for pushing opponents off of one of Overwatch's many cliffs. From a defensive and support perspective, Brigitte has a barrier shield that will protect her, and it can be used to bash enemies, again knocking them back, plus repair packs which can be deployed to heal allies. Furthermore, if Brigitte damages a member of the opposing team whilst in the vicinity of one of her comrades, they'll get a little bit of healing. Who said violence doesn't pay? Her ultimate, Rally, brings several of her defensive and support abilities together, giving her additional armor, enlarging her shield, and providing extra health to an ally within range. As we've mentioned, Brigitte can do a bit of everything, but as such, she's sadly a master of nothing. Still, she does, to a certain extent, help to fill the missing tank slot, and as such, we can't be all that mad at her. Number 20. Lifeweaver 
If we were to assign a Dungeons & Dragons class to each of Overwatch's heroes, then Lifeweaver would undoubtedly be a druid. A long-haired fella who just loves nature and draws his power from plants – sounds a lot like a druid to me. Alas, Lifeweaver is incapable of turning himself into an animal, so we've had to dock him a certain number of points for that, but thankfully, he makes up for the whole lack of wild shape thing with his many other attributes. This nature lover has a variety of plant-based options on the menu, such as Healing Blossom, which fires a blast of healing at an ally, Thorn Volley, Life Weaver's offensive skill, Petal Platform that's useful for gaining that all-important high ground, Rejuvenating Dash, an ability that heals the healer as he runs forward, and Life Grip that can yank a chum out of harm's way. The flora fun doesn't stop there, though, because Lifeweaver's ultimate is a great big tree that provides healing to any of the long-haired lad's comrades that happen to be standing near it. Honestly, the Lorax would be so proud. As good of a support as he is, though, Lifeweaver suffers from the old high skill ceiling issue, meaning that he can be an asset to a team, but he's not guaranteed to be, especially with an inexperienced player in the driving seat. On the plus side, though, he does make the place look a heck of a lot prettier, and who doesn't love a bit of flower power? Number 19. Ilari one of the newest Overwatch heroes, at least at time of writing, is support character Ilari, the last of the Inti Warriors and blessed with the power of the sun. This 18-year-old Peruvian is the youngest member of Overwatch, but don't let her lack of years put you off selecting her because she is a force to be reckoned with. Naturally, we players would expect a lady with the ability to harness the power of the sun to be a bit of a badass, and Ilari doesn't disappoint. Her solar rifle acts as both a devastating long-range weapon and a mid-range healing tool, Healing Pylon is a pylon what does healing, and the Captive Sun ultimate ability lets her fire a ball of solar energy at her opponents, slowing them and causing significant damage. Being new to the roster, not everyone is used to Ilari's toolset, which is both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, a disorganized enemy team might not know how best to counter Ilari. However, an inexperienced player might not utilize her to her full potential. At the moment, she's proving to be quite a useful teammate, but as players become more clued in to how she works and therefore how to deal with her, she's likely to become less formidable in the future. If she doesn't, though, do feel free to come back here and shout at us in the comments for being wrong. We can take it. You might make our writer cry, but hey, who cares, <laughs> am I right? Uh, number 18. Sigma it turns out that being an Overwatch hero isn't just a young person's game, as proven by 64-year-old scientist Sigma. As in, Sigma balls. Born Sebrin de Kuiper, Sigma is Overwatch's 31st hero, having joined the ranks in August 2019, and he instantly impressed players with his command of gravity. A tank with the ability not just to cause damage to others, but to heal himself as well, Sigma can be a great asset to a team as long as he's in the hands of the right player. Sigma offers players a wide variety of skills, from his primary weapon, Hyper Spears, and the ability Accretion, both of which have the power to dish out plenty of damage to opponents, to Kinetic Grasp, which allows Sigma to absorb projectiles and turn them into health, and Experimental Barrier, a shield skill. As one would expect from a character whose focus is on gravity, Sigma's ultimate utilizes the force with deadly results. Gravitic Flux sees players flung into the air before being slammed into the ground at high speed. Though he's a decent blend of offense and defense, Sigma is let down by the fact that he's rather tricky to get to grips with, and with an inexperienced player at the helm, he's not all that useful. Put him with someone who knows what they're doing, though, and you've got yourself a very powerful tank that's capable of obliterating the enemy and brings a touch of class to proceedings whilst he's doing it. Number 17. Junker Queen 
The world of Overwatch isn't short of badass ladies, but if we had to bestow an award for being the absolute most badass, it would 100% go to Junker Queen. This axe and shotgun wielding Aussie is the reigning monarch of Junker Town, a settlement in the outback constructed from the ruins of the Australian Omnium and home to the Junkers, a society of cutthroats trying to survive in the harsh environment. Being a tanky queen as well as a Junker one, Junker Queen is all about getting right into the midst of battle, and she can do some serious damage with her Scattergun, a pump-action shotgun that blasts through enemies like like they're not even there. Those in melee range will wish they weren't, as Carnage sees Junker Queen unleashing a devastating axe attack, and even those at a distance aren't safe thanks to her jagged blade attack and Rampage ultimate ability. The final trick up Junker Queen's sleeve though, or it would be if she had sleeves, is Commanding Shout, which grants temporary health and a boost to movement speed to not just the Queen herself, but also any allies within range. What lets Junker Queen down, though, is that compared to other tanks, she's lacking in the health department. She can certainly get the job done, but players will need to ensure they've got a good support hero on hand at all times. Otherwise, this queen might quickly lose her crown. Number 16. Doomfist Prepare yourselves, because we're all in for a good doom fisting. Oh wait, no, sorry, no, cut that out, Alex. Back in the good old days of Overwatch 1, Doomfist could be found amongst the likes of Cassidy, Soldier 76, and Reaper in the DPS category. However, someone at Blizzard presumably realized that a hulking dude with a bionic punching arm was probably best suited to being a meat shield, and so he can now be found amongst Overwatch 2's tanks. Doomfist likes to get up close and personal, and all of his abilities rely on players being willing to take him wherever battle is thickest. He does have a ranged weapon of sorts, the hand cannon, but it's only really effective at short range, whilst rocket punch, seismic slam, and power block do tremendous melee damage. Ultimate-wise, Doomfist gets Meteor Strike, which sees him propel himself into the air before smashing down in a spot of his choosing, dealing huge amounts of damage. Trust us, if you hear someone yell Meteor Strike, it's best to run for cover. Or in fact, if you hear anyone yelling anything in Overwatch, just run. As a tank, Doomfist is an absolutely fantastic disruptor, as long as he's in capable hands, something we've said about a fair few recent entries. Yes, sadly, his skill ceiling is sky high. In fact, he might just be the hardest character in the entire game to play well. And even though he can be a real nuisance to an enemy team, the fact that he's so tricky to get to grips with prevents him from placing higher on our list. Number 15, Torbjorn. I sure hope you're ready to work, because we've got turrets to build. Standing at a dinky 4 foot 7 inches, well, it's taller than me, this small scale Swede is here to engineer his way to victory. Armed with a rivet gun and a forge hammer, small King Torbjorn may be seriously lacking in the height department, but he packs a real punch where it counts. You're not here for the hammer or the rivet gun though, you want to know all about Torbjorn's USP, the turret. The self-building turret automatically detects enemies and fires deadly projectiles that can take most heroes out in just a few shots. It's an absolute menace to come up against, and if you do find yourself on the receiving end of Torbjorn's turret, you better hope you've got a decent tank in tow to take it out. Oh, and did we mention that Torbjorn can also fire lava at his enemies? Yeah, that's quite annoying to be on the receiving end of too. Old Torby was once a go-to for any team trying to defend a point. But now that Overwatch 2 is out and things are a bit more mobile, he's become slightly less popular. Still, if you can position that turret well, then Lil Torbs will certainly get the job done even when enemies are on the move, and mightily piss them off in the process. Is Torbjorn the powerhouse he once was? No. Is he still rather useful on the field of battle though? Yes. Did we place him this high up the list partly because of his sweet beard? No comment. Number 14, Soldier 76. 
If you're brand new to Overwatch, then perhaps the best hero you could choose to play as is Soldier 76. Born Jack Morrison, Soldier 76 is probably the easiest character on the whole roster for new players to learn. His abilities are all useful but easy to understand, he can heal himself, which is always nice, especially if you're not all that experienced yet, and as long as you're not completely incompetent when it comes to aiming, you should be able to down a good few enemies. As his name would imply, Soldier 76 is a military man, and his arsenal reflects that. His primary weapon is a heavy pulse rifle, which does decent damage at close and mid-range, and is also capable of launching helix rockets to do some serious harm to your enemies. Soldier 76 can also sprint, meaning that if the tide of battle turns for the worst, he can very quickly get out of dodge, and then use his biotic field to claw back some all-important HP. It's always good to take a breather, I always say. In fact, I might just have a little break now. <sighs> oh, that was good. Uh, his ultimate ability, Tactical Visor, auto-aims the Heavy Pulse Rifle for a period of time, so if you've got a cluster of enemies out in the open, you'll be able to dispatch them real quick. Like beans on toast, Soldier 76 isn't fancy, but he is simple, saucy, just look at that Grill Master skin, whoa, and gets the job done. And sometimes, that's all you really want out of life. Number 13, Kiriko. Are you in the market for a DPS-flavored support hero? Well, look no further than Kiriko. A Miko, or Shrine Maiden if you want to get helpful definitions from Simon Miller about this, of the Kanazaka Shrine and trained alongside Genji and Hanzo, Kiriko fights for peace as a member of the Yokai Gang, a group of young troublemakers dedicated to hindering the Hashimoto clan who are responsible for the assassination of Sajiro Shimada, head of the Shimada clan. <laughs> There's a lot of Japanese there, did I do okay? Kiriko draws her powers from her connection to a kitsune, that is, a Japanese fox spirit, and is just as comfortable taking on foes as she is assisting her allies. Her healing Afuda are thrown talismans, the protection Suzu gets rid of some negative effects and makes teammates invulnerable for a time, Swift Step allows Kiriko to teleport directly to a friend in need, and her kunai can put enemies down in no time. Perhaps the greatest thing about Kiriko, though, is that she has the cutest ultimate ability ever. Once charged, she can summon the aforementioned Fox Spirit that increases the movement and attack speeds and reduces the cooldowns of any ally that follows in its path. Useful and adorable, oh, sign me up. The downside to Kiriko, though, is undoubtedly her high skill ceiling. Because she's as much a DPS as she is a support character, some players can find it hard to maintain a balance. But at the end of the day, you will not find a more charming ultimate ability. Number 12, Echo. She may not be pink and round, but Echo is to Overwatch what Kirby is to Nintendo, a friendly character with the ability to absorb the powers of others. Alright, she doesn't absorb them as such, she just sort of copies them, but I'll be damned if I pass up the chance to talk about Kirby, even if it is just for a second. Look how cute he is. Uh, anyway, Echo was the last hero introduced to the original Overwatch roster, making her debut in uh, April 2020, and I think it's fair to say that she was easily the best thing that happened that month. Now, Echo is a bit of a glass cannon, but oh boy is their emphasis on the cannon. She really packs a punch in the damage department. She comes equipped with not one, not two, but three offensive weapons. Her primary weapon, Tri-Shot, and two with cooldowns, Sticky Bombs, and Focusing Beam. She also has the power of flight, but her ultimate is the real star here. Duplicate allows Echo to choose an opponent and become them for a short period of time, meaning she can effectively take on the powers of any hero as long as they're present on the opposing team. This can cause absolute chaos and really wipes the smirk off that diva that just bunny-bombed half your squad. The main issue with Echo, though, is that she needs a support character on her tail constantly, otherwise she'll spend more time at the spawn than she does in the heat of battle, and I'm sure many players who use her as their main will echo this sentiment. <laughs> uh, ben? Number 11. Baptiste 
Going to the doctor is boring, isn't it? Getting up early to try and get an appointment, dealing with snotty receptionists, sitting for ages in a beige waiting room that smells a bit funny. Nightmare. Now, if after all of that, my doctor came out and launched a special healing grenade at me to cure my tonsillitis, that would be fun. Clearly Blizzard share my vision for the future of the NHS, as they brought Baptiste to Overwatch in March 2019. This Haitian healer is here to cure what ails you, and then inflict similar ailments upon the opposing team. Being a support character, most of his abilities are focused on healing and buffing his allies. The biotic launcher, whilst capable of doing some serious damage to opponents, also fires projectiles that burst on impact and heal all friends in the vicinity. Regenerative burst heals Baptiste and nearby comrades, and the immortality field makes everyone who stands in it invincible for a time. Finally, Baptiste's ultimate ability, the Amplification Matrix, boosts the damage of any projectile that is fired through it. As an all-round support, Baptiste is great. He delivers the heals, hurts, and helps in equal measure. Sadly, though, his abilities largely rely on the rest of the team staying close to him, so if you end up grouped with folks that like to use the space rather than sticking with their support, Baptiste might not be the best choice. Number 10. Orissa. Back in the days of Overwatch, Orissa was a bit of a menace. Able to shield herself from harm, she along with heroes like Reinhardt could hold a point like nobody's business. Unlike Reinhardt, however, Orissa has undergone a serious rework and as such remains as relevant now as she ever was. Gone is Orissa's protective barrier, meaning that she's now far more mobile, and in its place is Javelin Spin, which blocks incoming projectiles and gives the tank a little burst of speed. Halt is also no longer one of Orissa's abilities, and instead she has Energy Javelin, which allows players to launch a beam of energy at foes, knocking them back and stunning them. Orissa's main weapon and her Fortify ability have also had a makeover. She now totes the Augmented Fusion Driver, a heat-based weapon that can fire continuously for up to five seconds, and Fortify now adds temporary health, slows Orissa a little, and reduces the heat generated by the Augmented Fusion Driver. She's also got a brand new ultimate ability, Terror Surge, which sweeps in nearby enemies and deals a huge amount of damage, and is, in our humble opinion anyway, much more useful than her previous one, which simply buffed allies. If you're looking for a defensive tank, then Orissa is no longer your gal, but if you want a tough tank with a low skill ceiling that deals serious damage and excels at crowd control, then look no further. Number 9. Bastion Despite being an in-match killing machine, Bastion is one of the sweetest characters in all of Overwatch. Once a part of the Rebel Omnic army, Bastion was heavily damaged in battle and lay dormant for over a decade, reawakening thanks to curious bird pal Ganymede. His combat programming all but gone, he set out into the world to find his purpose once more. Aw, what a cutie. Bastion used to be half robot, half turret, however his abilities have been updated, so he's now half robot, half tank, which works way better in the dynamic world of Overwatch 2. In recon configuration, Bastion can move around the map quite rapidly and attack enemies using a lightweight, highly accurate gun, whereas in assault configuration he turns into a less mobile tank with a high-power rotary cannon. In addition to big guns, Bastion can also launch big bombs at his enemies, which explode either when they hit someone or they hit the ground. His final configuration, Ultimate Ability Artillery, sees Bastion stop entirely and rain down up to three deadly shells on his opponents. Bastion's various configurations make him useful in a number of different situations, and whilst he does often need good support in order to keep him trucking, his devastating damage capabilities have helped many a team snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Did we give Bastion extra points because Ganymede is just so darned endearing? Yes, we did. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Number 8. Lucio Overwatch 2 is all about keeping things moving, so who better to have on your side than a Healy Wheelie boy with sweet tunes and an even sweeter hairdo? Indeed, in our opinion, the best all-round support character is Lucio, the international celebrity and activist turned Overwatch hero who spreads the love and indeed the healing through the clever use of music and his dope rollerblading skills. Because he's surrounded by an aura of healing, or speed if he so chooses, that doesn't need to recharge or even be manually activated, Lucio only needs to be in the vicinity of his comrades in order to aid them. That's right, even if he's just standing there like a lemon, Lucio is still helping his allies. Furthermore, his Amp It Up ability gives an occasional boost to either healing or speed, and his Sound Barrier ultimate grants nearby allies temporary HP. He's not just about healing, though. Lucio has some reasonable offensive skills as well. His sonic amplifier fires blasts of sound at enemies, dealing damage, and Soundwave knocks them back, which is very enjoyable if your foe of choice is stood at the edge of the map. 
the fun you'll have booping enemies off cliffs, I tell you. Simple to get to grips with and highly useful, especially when it comes to helping allies, you can't really go wrong with Lucio on your team. Just remember, if you see an enemy Lucio approaching, maybe make sure to stay far away from sheer drops, yeah? Number 7. Zarya Sometimes it pays to have a little muscle on your team, and there are few with quite so many muscles as Strong Lady Zarya. Born in a small Siberian village torn apart by the Omnic Crisis, Zarya grew up vowing to help her people recover from the conflict, focusing on weightlifting and bodybuilding to make herself as strong as possible. This big woman wields a big weapon, the Particle Cannon, which was deemed far too heavy for a standard soldier to use, but is no problem for the muscle-bound Zarya. The cannon fires a short-range stream of energy as well as energy grenades for those opponents that are just out of reach, and its power is charged every time Zarya's particle barrier is hit by enemy fire. Not only does the particle barrier increase Zarya's damage output, it also shields her from harm, and a second can even be projected onto a teammate. Zarya's final ability is the Graviton Surge, which pulls nearby enemies together, allowing Zarya, or any other hero for that matter, to absolutely annihilate them. Mobile, sturdy enough to get into the fray, able to protect her allies with shielding bubbles, and offering an ultimate ability that can really turn the tide of battle, Zarya is a great choice of tank. The only downside is that she does take a little while to get used to, but after a few matches, most players will surely get the hang of her. Number 6. Ramatra you know what we were saying way back about Reaper being the scariest Overwatch hero? Yeah, scratch that, because honestly, he looks like a pussycat compared to Ramatra, the omnic leader of the terrifying Null Sector. Added to Overwatch 2 in December 2022, Ramatra is what Zenyatta could have become if he hadn't stuck with the monks. And whilst the outcome isn't exactly good for humanity, it's undeniably great for any team in which he's present. What makes Ramatra so formidable is the fact that he has two distinct skill sets, one that he can use in his Omnic form, and one he can use in his Nemesis form, which, trust me, is every bit as horrifying as it sounds. In Omnic form, Ramatra is able to use his primary weapon, the Void Accelerator, to fire a stream of projectiles at unfortunate foes, as well as the Void Barrier, which can protect him and his comrades from harm. In Nemesis form, Ramatra's primary attack is Pummel which fires powerful blasts of energy with every punch, and he's able to prevent incoming damage using block. Ravenous Vortex, a sphere of energy that creates an AoE on the ground which slows enemies, can be used in either form, and his ultimate, Annihilation, switches him to Nemesis form and sees Ramatra unleashing a deadly swarm against his adversaries. His mixture of defensive and offensive capabilities plus his speed make Ramatra one fearsome tank, though in fairness, his very appearance is enough to put the willies up us. Number 5. Mauga did somebody order a Moana crossover? Because I'm pretty certain that's what we've got ourselves here. Oh, and for that one song that's now stuck in your head, you're welcome. Added to the game at the beginning of Season 8 in December 2023, Mauga, full name Mauga Loa Melosi, is a heavy-hitting Samoan with a whole bunch of sick tats. That's what the cool kids would say, right? Although he's not been around for long, he's made a big impression on the Overwatch community, and if you're on the enemy team, that impression is probably one of severe frustration, because he is almost impossible to take down. This beefcake is packing some serious heat. Literally. One of his chain guns actually sets enemies on fire, whilst the other deals critical damage to foes who have been set ablaze. Talk about kicking someone while they're down. Mauga also has the Overrun ability, which sees him charge forward, launch opponents out of the way as he does so, two hearts, one organic and one cybernetic that give him the cardiac overdrive ability, and berserker, which grants temporary hit points. See what I mean when I say almost impossible to take down? His ultimate ability is no joke either, as he can create a barrier and trap enemies in his vicinity, so you can't even run, you certainly can't hide. Mauga has already been nerfed once, and based on his current performance, we wouldn't be surprised surprised if Blizzard nerfed him even further. Oh well, at least he's not stealing your boat. Number 4. Sojourn The first new character added to the roster for Overwatch 2 was Sojourn, a DPS hero who may not have been around for long, but has certainly made her mark on the game. Sojourn is like Soldier 76 in a number of ways. 
She's fast, easy to pick up and play, and she's got a variety of skills that make her useful in many situations. So why is she so much higher up our list than old Soldier Boy? Well, put simply, she's much more powerful. Her railgun stores energy as it fires, allowing players to unleash a potent blast every so often that can deal crazy damage. The power slide is useful for getting into and out of brawls quickly, plus it cancels into a leap for when you need to secure the high ground, and Disruptor Shot is great for breaking up a crowd and or dealing damage to a whole bunch of opponents at once. Sojourn's ultimate ability is also fire. Overclock sees her railgun auto-charging, and the charged shots she fires whilst the ultimate ability is active pierce through enemies, so it would be possible to take out a whole team in one blast if you can get them all lined up just right. Not likely, admittedly, but, you know, it could happen. If you've gotten used to Soldier but are longing for a hero that packs more of a punch, then Sojourn is your gal. I suppose the only thing that would make her better would be, I don't know, if she had a dragon pal? But, you know, I doubt we're going to find a hero with an ability like that. Anyway, number three, Hanzo. What's better than a hero with sweet bow and arrow skills? A hero with sweet bow and arrow skills and the ability to summon a mystical freaking dragon pal, that's what! Once a member of the Shimada ninja clan, Hanzo now wanders the world, bow in hand, trying to regain his honor after striking down his brother, Genji. His primary weapon is the Storm Bow, which despite looking rather futuristic, is just a bow and arrow. But don't let its lack of trappings put you off, because in the right hands, it's absolutely lethal. Being a ninja, Hanzo is able to scale walls like they're not even there, and perform two-thirds of a triple jump, which allows him to traverse large gaps with ease. His sonic arrow reveals the location of nearby enemies, and his storm arrows ricochet, causing absolute chaos for opponents. Then of course there's his ultimate ability, Dragon Strike. This incredibly powerful skill lets Hanzo summon a humongous dragon spirit which tears through the map, obliterating all enemies in its path. It's huge, almost impossible to escape, and does insane amounts of damage, making it one of the best offensive ultimates in the whole game. Now, I know we've marked several other heroes down because of how much accuracy they require, and that is still certainly a downside to Hanzo, but we think his other abilities, and did we mention the massive bleeding dragon, more than make up for his high skill ceiling. I, I did remember to talk about the dragon, didn't I? Number two, Diva. What do you get when you combine a love of video games, nuclear weaponry, and a lot of pink? No, it's not Barbenheimer shovelware on Steam. It's Diva, the greatest tank on the Overwatch roster. 21-year-old Hannah Song, codenamed Diva, might be one of the youngest Overwatch heroes, but what she lacks in experience, she more than makes up for in ability to kick ass and take names. Diva has an awful lot going for her. Firstly, as a tank, she has a large pool of health to draw from, and the good news is that once her mech's health is depleted, she still has her own to fall back on. Admittedly, D.Va is a lot squishier outside of her mech, but land a few hits on the enemy and you'll have your trusty armor back in no time. Her primary weapons in her mech are the fusion cannons, which fire an infinite number of projectiles that are most deadly at short range. Additionally, she has a shield, known as the Defense Matrix, which will deflect oncoming attacks, boosters to get her in and out of trouble quick sharp, and micro-missiles that are sure to put a dampener on any enemy's day. The best thing about D.Va, however, has to be her ultimate, Self-Destruct. Once fully charged, D.Va can eject from her mech and command it to blow up, and trust me when I say you don't want to be anywhere nearby when it goes off. In terms of utility, how good of a tank she is, and her character's design and personality, D.Va is an amazing hero and fully deserves a spot near the top. However, she just isn't quite as iconic as… Number 1. Tracer Here comes T-Racer. Indeed, according to our extensive research, this speedy miss is the greatest Overwatch hero of all time. Perpetually cheeky Cockney Tracer was the original game's cover star, and for good reason. 
Not only is she incredibly endearing, instantly winning herself legions of fans with her plucky, can-do attitude and team spirit, but she's also very handy to have on your team and mighty annoying to come up against. Her main weapons, a pair of pulse pistols, do decent enough damage, and her ultimate ability, Pulse Bomb, can blow most opponents to kingdom come. That's not why people choose Tracer for their squad, though. They pick her because she's able to teleport all over the place, and if things aren't going her way, she can rewind time, healing herself in the process. She doesn't have the biggest pool of health in the world, but when you're super fast, armed to the teeth with pistols and bombs, and can turn back the clock if you get hit, that really doesn't matter all that much. Dynamic, iconic, fun to play as, and devilishly tricky to hit, not to mention the fact that she's an absolute sweetheart and a Brit to boot, not that that's actually factored into the rankings, Tracer is easily the greatest of the Overwatch greats. So without further ado, we crown Tracer the very best Overwatch hero of all time. If she were here, we'd like to think she'd throw us a cheeky cheers love in appreciation. We'll just take it as red. You're very welcome. Tracer. <laughs>